As parents, we take the time to raise our children to be polite, to have good manners, to show respect, to share with friends, and to treat others the way they would want to be treated. And this video may be about how to answer the question, what is transgender, to your child of any age. But the underlying message is about teaching your child to be inclusive, to help them understand about diversity in the world and their community, and to better educate them about the gender spectrum. I'm Kathleen Hama, and I make YouTube videos for parents on how to talk about sex and sexual health with their child. It's 2021, and currently in the United States, there are about 45 different bills being introduced in state legislatures across the states that are trying to prevent or ban transgender youth from participating in school and recreational youth sports. As a parent, and especially as a parent to young children, I'm constantly talking to them about being inclusive, finding a game that everybody wants to play, to not cry or get upset when another kid wins the game. And then there's these bills that every couple of years get introduced and some even become law that simply try to exclude transgender people from participating in society or just living in society. Bathroom bans, transgender individuals in the military, transgender individuals participating in sport. And currently that's the latest push, trying to exclude transgender people from participating in sport in the category of their gender identity and forcing them to participate with others who share the same assigned sex at birth. You hear sports and you think competition, but let's back it up. Why did you sign your child up to participate in sports in the first place? What was your main motivation as a parent to have your child play sports? Is it because your child has now come to you and asked to participate in sport because they really want to learn it? Is it that your child shows exceptional talent in a sport and you want them to get scouted? Or is it for team building, camaraderie, physical activity, learning sportsmanship, learning dedication to something, perseverance in something, and continuously practicing something? We acknowledge when it comes to participating in sport and especially youth sports, it's not always about winning. There will be times when our child will win, will lose, they will do their absolute best, but someone else was just a little bit faster, taller, quicker, stronger. What do we say to them when they come to us after they have lost and have that look, that feeling of losing? Do we say? Playing sports will have ups and downs, and this game was one of those downs. What do you think went well in the game? How are you feeling? What do you think you can do to improve your abilities? What can you do to practice more? How can I support you? Or you seem to always lose against that person or that team. They seem to have an unfair advantage if you can never beat them. I will find out what it is and make sure that you don't have to compete against them. In this moment, with a child participating in sport, what is it that we are trying to teach them? That sport participation should only be limited to specific individuals? Or that sport is like life and that there will be people who are better, stronger, faster, taller, quicker than you at any given moment. Losing or the fear of losing or feeling like others have an unfair advantage and that's why we can't win or succeed. That's not the message that I think that we are trying to send our children when we initially sign them up for sport. Not all transgender people play sport, and not all transgender people are even good at sport. These bills and laws are designed to exclude a population from participating in sport. These bills and laws will eventually, in time, be overturned and deemed discriminatory because transgender people are people, and people get to participate in society. By forcing a transgender person to prove their sex in order to participate in sport, we are not taking into account the already high rates of depression, anxiety, and mental health issues amongst this population. And we are forgetting a basic component of parenting, teaching our children about diversity, and not just racial and ethnic and nationality diversity, but also the gender spectrum, gender identity, and sexual orientation. In no way does talking about gender as being non-binary and transgender as a part of the gender spectrum from an early age harm your child in any way. Children are learning about the world around them and they're learning about the diversity of people around them. Excluding children from participating in sport is not the way to go. Now, before you start leaving me comments saying transgender individuals have an unfair advantage in sport, I am not talking about collegiate, semi-professional, or professional sports. That is being addressed by the sporting industry governing bodies. I'm talking about participating in youth, recreational, middle, and high school sport. Let everybody play. 
It's about playing the sport. And as parents, we have made it more about the competition of the sport, and it's fine to have the competition aspect of sport, but if we're only focusing on competition, winning and losing, then we're missing out on one of the more important aspects of participation in sport. If you're a parent, I would encourage you to support the LGBT transgender community and have a conversation with your child and explain what is transgender. Majority of four and five year olds have a gender identity and they can explain to you what gender that they feel they are. If you have a child in the primary age, definitely have a conversation about the gender spectrum. If you're unsure about how to explain the gender spectrum to your primary age child, check out this video where I do just that and I talk about how I explain the gender spectrum to my four year old. Don't worry, you're not gonna harm your child in any way by explaining that gender is on a spectrum. And once you do explain that gender is on a spectrum, you can follow that up by explaining what is transgender. You can say something to the effect of, when a baby is developing in the uterus, the outside body parts are being made, including the genitals, as well as the inside of the body, including the internal organs and the brain. The body also makes hormones, which are chemicals in the body that help it to grow and develop. Now, when a baby is born, the doctor and the parents will usually look at the genitals, and if they see a penis, they will assign the sex of a boy to the child, and if they see a vulva, they will assign the sex of a girl to the child. As a baby starts to grow older, the hormones in the brain may start to feel more like a boy or a girl or somewhere in between. If a person was born with a vulva, and as they get older, they start to feel like a girl, then they may start to express themselves as a girl. What are some ways that a person can express themselves if they want to express that they are a girl? This, you're having a dialogue, so just kind of see where your child, what they say. There are some people who are born with a vulva and as they get older, their brain and hormones start to tell them that they don't quite feel like a girl. They may feel more like a boy or they may not feel completely like a boy or somewhere in between a boy and a girl. And if they say, I feel like a boy and I want to express myself as a boy, then this is called transgender. They may want to make themselves appear on the outside of their body, the gender that they feel they are on the inside of their body. And they may do this by expressing themselves through the clothes that they wear or their hairstyle. At the intermediate age, you can say something to the effect of, a person may be born with genitals that is also confirmed by their brain, the gender that they feel they are. So for example, if a person is born with a vulva and feels female, they would be called cisgender. But if a person is born with a vulva and feels male, they would be called a transgender male. If you meet someone and you're not sure how to address them, just simply ask them, how can I refer to you? There are many things that our brain, body, and hormones decide for us that we may choose to embrace or we may not want to embrace, like the color of our hair or our teeth. But when it comes to gender, it's not as simple as just changing our hair color or getting braces and it can feel like a real struggle for someone to just be who they are. So it's never okay to bully someone and it's definitely not okay to bully someone just because they are transgender. At the middle and high school age, you're gonna start out very similar to the intermediate age, but you're gonna add on a little bit more. You can say something to the effect of, a person may be born with genitals that is also confirmed by their brain, the gender that they feel they are. So if a person is born with a penis and feels male, they would be called cisgender. But if a person is born with a penis and feels female, they would be called a transgender female. As puberty changes occur, a transgender person may decide to take hormones in order to match their gender identity. And this can then change how their body will develop. They may look and appear more male or female, depending on whether they're a transgender male or female. Never assume a person's gender. If you aren't sure what gender a person is, just ask them, ask them what pronouns they would prefer. A transgender person may or may not take hormones. They may or may not get surgery to have the outside of their body match their gender identity. There is no one way to be transgender. Each person can decide how they want to express their gender identity. It is estimated that in the United States, transgender individuals make up about almost 1% of the total US population. What this means is that there are people who may never come into contact with a trans person, and therefore they may choose to be discriminatory towards them. 
And that's why I'm explaining this to you, because that's not okay. I want you to know what transgender is, and so that you can then educate others who are not informed, and you can support the transgender community. I hope this video gives you parents the confidence to answer the question, what is transgender with your child? And if you want to prepare yourself for questions that your child may have about the gender spectrum, check out this video. I'm Kathleen Hama, and I'll be back next week with another video on It's Time for the Sex Talk for Parents.